Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining today's webinar on DAM Trends to Watch in 2022. This is an exciting topic for us as we get an opportunity to uh, share what we're learning and what we're seeing out there in the marketplace with you and give you some ideas on what we expect to uh, continue over the next uh, several months. And uh, I see a lot of uh, folks that have joined us today. So thank you very much for, for taking some time out of your day uh, to sit in on this half hour presentation. My name is Scott Dill, uh, Business Development Manager here with Real Story Group, and my colleague Jared Jingris um, is on the line, as you can see as well. He'll be taking us through the heart of today's presentation, but I just wanted to kick things off with a, a couple quick housekeeping items of note. Um, as an attendee, you will be receiving a copy of the slides for this presentation in the next couple of days, and uh, a recording will be available uh, on our website as well. And then uh, for our subscribers on the line, um, you can always access this as part of your subscriber library. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, if you have questions, um, you can enter those into the questions tab and they go to webinar control panel. We'll either get to those at the end of today's session or uh, reach back out to you if we do not have time uh, at the end of the session today. Just a little bit of background about Real Story Group as I do see a number of uh, new folks on the line with us today. Uh, we are at heart an industry analyst firm and publish research on uh, a number of different marketplaces. Today, we're gonna to focus on digital asset management. And if that's something you're looking at in terms of evaluating vendors in the space, or uh, perhaps wondering whether your incumbent provider is the right fit for you, you can subscribe to our research in that area. We would have uh, access to evaluations of about 20 different, excuse me, 28 different uh, vendors in the space. And as part of that, you can actually also get direct access to Jared and the rest of our uh, analyst team, provide you with a little bit more uh, real world background uh, about the different vendors uh, and their fits uh, for you. We also have an offering where if you're taking a little bit more of a holistic look at your MarTech stack, subscribe to all of the research that we offer. And in that case, it comes with a bucket of 20 advisory hours that you can use at your discretion on any matter, whether that be taking a look at your stack and, and the gaps that you have or redundant systems that you may have in place and um, what are some ways to uh, alleviate that. Um, you can also um, look at joining the Stack Leadership Council that we formed three years ago where we have a number of folks um, that get together three to four times per year. Typically, it's on uh, one particular topic. Uh, for example, our most recent meeting was around marketing attribution platforms and really get an idea from other folks that are uh, having some of the same uh, challenges and successes that you are to uh, get an idea of what's working, what's not working, and um, some even further dirt uh, on the vendors uh, in, in the MarTech space. So if you ever need more info on that, you can uh, email me at the uh, address you see here on the screen. Now, as I mentioned, we cover uh, about nine different marketplaces. This is our uh, famous or infamous uh, MarTech stack vendor map. Today's focus uh, is going to be on the purple line, uh, digital asset management. Uh, as you can see, we uh, we do cover about 28 different vendors in that space. Now, um, other thing I want to really stress what's important about Real Story Group. We've been going at this for uh, 21 years now, and we've always been, always adhered to the same model, which is We'll never work for uh, or advise the vendors that we cover in any way. Our focus is completely on uh, the buyer side of the table and helping you uh, select a solution that's going to be the right fit to meet your needs. So there'll, there'll always be uh, an unbiased look uh, within the research that we publish. And Jared and the rest of our analysts will pull no punches when talking about what the vendors do well, but maybe more importantly, sometimes what, what they don't do so well and where they could fall short for you. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Jared, again, our managing director and our lead dam analyst, who will uh, take you through the dam trends to, to, to keep an eye out for in 2022. Jared? Great. Thank you, Scott. And I'll echo what Scott said. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. We always appreciate that. And a special thank you to our subscribers who allow us to do what we do. We think we play an important role in, in this uh, in the ecosystem, you know, being that watchdog of, of the different vendors out there and helping to play matchmaker for many of you who are looking to acquire new technology. Um, and, 
you know, our, your subscriptions allow us to, to keep doing that. So thank you so much for all your support there. Also, Scott mentioned, you know, the, the topic for today is around uh, trends for 2022. And we always like doing this, this session at least once a year because it allows us to kind of pick our heads up from the the research game that we're that we're constantly doing following all these different vendors and you know and helping our clients uh, pick the right technology and like I said take it allows us to kind of pick our heads up for a few minutes and and take a step back and say all right well what are the trends that we're seeing across the board and um, it, it, with regards to what the vendors are doing and what with regards to what our clients are asking these vendors to do for them and so sometimes that aligns and sometimes that is misaligned but uh it's also fun to kind of look back a year ago to where we were with with the 2021 trends and to see how fast this this marketplace moves or or not so fast in, in some cases i think we're at a position of uh, relative maturity in the dam space that this marketplace doesn't evolve super quick but there is evolution you know as i look back at at uh at 2021, you know, some of you who attended that uh, last year, you might see some familiar themes today. But I think those themes, to a to a, a bullet point there, I think they all did advance to some degree, and that's good news. So it might not always be as fast as we want, but this 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 marketplace continues to evolve, no doubt. So I think I have seven trends to go through today. The first trend that I want to talk about is. This notion that market evolution and the market splits are typically aligning with uh, many of the stages that you all are on in your individual digital asset management journey. So what do I mean by that? So over the last few years, we've developed a graphic or a, a concept or a framework, if you will, of assessing where someone is on their digital asset management journey. Now, you know, the reason we did this is because when we start conversations with our clients, we're always wondering where an organization is on that journey. Everyone's at a different stage of this journey. And, you know, some are at some, some we, what we call like a, a 0, 0.0 stage of your journey. Some are at a 1.0, some are at 2.0, some are at 3.0, and some are even, I'm here to tell you, pushing the envelope at a 4.0 level. So, and we'll, we'll get into what we mean by that. But I thought, it, it, it's 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 really helpful to kind of put give you all this framework to kind of see what we're seeing with regards to again the buyers of technology what stages they're at and you can begin to see some of the themes that we'll talk about today um, are very indicative of buyers moving from one phase to the next or vendors intentionally targeting one phase or the next and I, I think there's some interesting learnings there. So I'll quickly go through this framework. DAM 1.0 is something we call standalone library. That's the situation where you finally gotten a DAM in place and you're finally managing assets through a life cycle, right? You've probably come from a situation in a less than 1.0 environment where you were, had assets scattered all over your enterprise. Maybe you were leveraging things like cloud file sharing tools and shared drives and lots of assets on your laptops and phones and desktops and all over the place. But you finally made the commitment to DAM you've stood up a, a digital asset management system but at the end of the day in a dam 1.0 tip world typically that dam is disconnected from the larger technology stack right it's what you've created is really just another place to upload assets and then hopefully download assets and then go to use them right so i'm sure it's improved your situation but for many of you it's not the end all be all uh environment that you'd like to achieve where many of you are landing is in a 2.0 world. And this is what we like to sometimes call DAM as a MarTech service. And typically in, in the 2.0 space, you know, the organization recognizes DAM as, as, a, as part of your MarTech stack. And you know, it's a critical part of the flow of content from your internal organization out to your various touch points to your constituents or co customers or clients. Um, there's probably integration upstream from upstream systems into your dam and, and integrations downstream out of your dam. But typically in this space, it's a one way flow of information uh, out into the world. Uh, like I said, many of you have, have that we talk to find themselves in this in this stage um, and many vendors target this stage uh, as a, a as the core of their offering 
DAM 3.0 is something we call DAM as an omni-channel content platform. Uh, this is where uh, you might expand your definition of what is truly being managed. You know, you maybe think bigger than just images and video and audio assets, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but um, it's this notion of treating video, treating traditional DAM assets in the same way as first class objects with other types of, of content, maybe like text content or micro experience content or documents or snippets of, of, of content. Um, and, in, you know, and there's a lot of compound relationships that need to be uh, thought through when you when you're at this model. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And, and I think another key key uh, factor here that needs to be considered in a 3.0 world is all of a sudden it's not just a one way flow of information, maybe information or analytics are flowing back to the dam uh, so that you know some decisions can start to be made in a really smart way based on real data real analytics to inform content decisions of the future so that's that's where uh, a select few vendors are really focusing on trying to become your omni-channel content platform and many buyers i can say some of the most sophisticated organizations in the world are all in on this as a as a strategy for delivering omni-channel content to the future and then there's this concept of 4.0 for the the most forward-looking uh enterprises that we we were working with where uh i'm going to speak about in in one of the trends uh, at the end today but i'll get get into this in much more detail but it's this notion of being able to not just use your dam as a as a or, or omni-channel content platform as a as a resource but being more proactive and more pr predictive about how content should be used to achieve the best results so predicting performance um, and doing some things real time to kind of enhance that performance and in, in, increase efficiency over time so much less than you are at this phase I, I can i can honestly say that but some of you definitely are and some of the vendors are very much thinking about this and you know it's something that we want to be be watching you know in the years to come now i mentioned that 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 framework is a good way to assess where where you are as a, as buyers on your damn journey but i think it's really important to to take that trend one step further and say there are different vendors out there we we like to put them in buckets as analysts from the complex to a simple spectrum. But these vendors that I'm showing on the screen right now are all targeting certain levels of, uh, of buyer. You know, their systems are fundamentally crafted to solve the challenges of a 1.0 world, of a 2.0 world, of a 3.0 world, or a 4.0 world. And as a buyer, you need to pick a, a vendor who is gonna get you to where you want to go. And that's even more critical than ever, ever before. Trend number two is something that I, I alluded to in, in, in that uh, framework introduction, and that's the fact that many buyers or many DAM users are think are starting to think bigger than just traditional assets. So again, traditionally we think about digital asset management, we think of images and video and audio and you know time-based assets in addition to the core, our core images and brand assets, right? But I think more and more in this omni-channel world, we when we want to when our goal is to create consistent experiences at every single touch point, sometimes just managing component assets are are not it's not enough. We need to think about how can we manage our components when they're fueled with data, right? And you know, maybe maybe we have some dynamic micro experiences that we want to manage as assets. Maybe there's some dynamic offers that we want to manage as assets. Maybe there's some specific kind of documents that we want to manage in, in component form or as, as, uh, as uh, compound, compo uh, compound documents. Um, and we, what, what many you know, forward-looking companies are thinking is, how can I manage these things side by side? How can I get out of this world where I have to worry about text in one system and then images in another and then try to marry them up in a, in a logical way that works in a truly omni-channel world. In previous times, we might have done this in, in each channel. Like our web team might have crafted experiences in, the, in our web system and our email team might have crafted those in a, in, a, in a marketing automation system, but maybe there's some reusable components that need to be kind of crafted together 
so that those components can then spread to every channel and truly deliver omnichannel experiences. So here's kind of an idealized creative to channel flow that we've been using to kind of take this conversation a little bit further. You know, not everyone's here, certainly, but if you work your way from the bottom up of this of this slide, you know, there's a lot that goes into the creative process of creating creating content, creating assets. You know, your creative operations teams, your marketing operations teams, there's a lot of scheduling and project and resource management that goes into that. And then there's a lot of workflow that goes through that process. Ultimately, at some decision point, whether it's work in progress assets or finalized assets go into a digital asset management system. And then when those components get fueled with data, then they go out to that world, like, like I said. Some companies or, or organizations are thinking this as two separate systems. Some are actually thinking of this as one system to manage my omni-channel content services and be my dam at the same time. That really depends on the situation, but this, concept of man, of thinking bigger than just traditional assets is very real and very powerful for the the most forward-looking omni-channel uh forward channel thinking organizations with omni-channel goals i should say and so what results at the end of the day if you do this right is in your martech stack what you've done is created a foundational services layer where content is one of your key pillars alongside with data and alongside with decisioning these are the true building blocks that you need to create experiences and, and give the, and the tools that you need to give to your the people that are creating experiences across the, across every single touch point every single channel if you're able to align your organization in a way that that gives your your teams the tools to uh, with regard to components fueled with data the right rich media, the right brand assets alongside data and decisioning, you're going to be in a much better place to, to achieve your omni-channel goals. Trend number three is something we're calling the never finished asset meets real time manipulation. Now, this is going to be an oversimplified view of this, I, I, I admit, but, you know, back a few years back, I, I should say we, many of us thought of our dams as the place where finished assets go. I would argue that's less and less the case in, in 2022 and more and more we're seeing this notion of the um, of the never finished asset. And what I mean by that is content creators are often thinking about creating like base images that can be manipulated, right? And, and these manipulations become sort of derivatives of that of that base asset. So here's a, a classic example as it relates to personalization where I have a, a kind of a blank image on the, on the left, but I'm able to overlay some, some sort of personalized text on, on the right. And based on, on me and the modality I'm interacting with, I might have a completely different experience than someone, someone else, you know, it, but, but largely it's that same image at the root. I think this gets really interesting and, uh, and powerful when we start to think about real-time asset manipulation. Now, again, super simple example where, you know, I'm putting an offer on top of, a, of an image, but let's think of something even even bigger than that. You know, for, for global enterprises, you know, we've talked to some organizations even this week who are saying, you know, we have this core concept of, a, of an asset that we want to deliver glo globally, but within that global asset, we want to have some regional differences portrayed in those, in, in the asset itself. So the idea would be, you know, if I'm viewing this in Europe versus Asia versus the North America, I could have three totally different different uh, asset experiences, but all kind of driven off the off the main the main asset itself. It's a powerful concept, but to manage that type of asset, you need a technology that can manage some compound relationships between assets and their derivatives. Right, so you need a system that can support this compound asset management, maybe support parent, child, and sibling relationships, and you know being able to apply rules to what happens when a, a parent cha asset changes versus a sibling asset changes versus a child asset changes. What is the what is the relationship? What is the inheritance model of metadata and 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 a whole slew of other different rules that that come uh, that come along with that kind of uh, complicated uh, asset storage. So. I bring this up like this is an important trend. This is what buyers want. 
But to deliver on this, you need a system that is fundamentally built to handle that use case. Number four is something we're calling context is king. Now, if you've been around this game as long as I have, we've gone through XYZ is king, XYZ is queen, XYZ is prince, who, who knows, you know, content was king 20 years ago. I think today context is more important than ever. And uh, again, a very overly simplistic example of this is thinking about kind of extending that, that concept of, that we talked about in the last trend, but in this one, we're talking about the right asset for the right context, right? So if I had this asset uh, at the left here and I want to show a, a different version of this asset uh, to someone, you know, based on their geography or the device they use or the channel that they're, that they're viewing it, that's one thing. But then let's complicate it a, step, a little bit more, take it a step further and say, what if we only have rights to use it in to a certain dates in certain geographies or certain dates for certain channels or certain dates for certain devices there's some complicated usage licensing that is out there that i'm sure is very relevant to many of you uh, on the call today and you know that this is hard to manage and getting really sophisticated with this in the dam i think is something that people have been demanding for quite some time and i think it's it's becoming more commonplace but I think we need to be able to get smarter about how we do this so that it's not reactionary. We'll be able to be a little bit more proactive in managing these things so that we're not caught after the fact, you know, when, it, when an asset is, is being misused. Trend number five is I see this uh, more and more that integrations are happening in the damn world. That's good. There's more integrations happening, but what these integrations are highlighting is the need to pay more attention to user experience. What do I mean by that? So unlike the damn 1.0 world, many of you have progressed to, a, to a, a state where you have upstream integrations and downstream integrations. You know, upstream might be things like integrations with your creative tools, your, your, you know, your creative suite of, of products. Maybe you have workflows that flow into the dam. If you're a CPG or retail company, maybe you have packaging type uh, information that flows out of a packaging tool into your dam, or you know you might have product information that flows into your dam. If you're a museum, maybe you have a collections management system that's flowing data into your dam. And then downstream are all the usual usual suspects, of course. You know the, the different channels you're you're creating experiences in your social, your email, your web. Again, if you're a CPG company, maybe it's your product information aggregation tool before it goes out to your various different retailers that are out there. Um, if, if you you might even have a, a customer care care or Salesforce automation type uh, channel that you, you want to make sure that the people answering the phones are pulling from the same uh, source of truth. So all these integrations are great. We all know that damn shouldn't exist in a vacuum. This is this is the future. This is the now. This is the present. But what this highlights is we can't lose sight of the fact that with integrations, with every integration that we put into place, we're impacting the way our colleagues work, right? And so I've seen this need percolating for some time, but in, in many organizations, people are saying, we need to devote someone to be thinking about the user experience of our staff, the people that are creating experiences so that we're not just checking a box saying, okay, this system is integrated and, it, it, it actually makes things harder than going to one system and downloading and re-uploading to the other system. We want to make sure that it, this, in, these integrations truly help and not hinder us from, from doing our jobs. And so it seems obvious, but these integrations are getting more and more complicated and it's not always helping at the end of the day. So it doesn't have to be necessarily be a full-time role in your team, but someone needs to be thinking about the users uh, of your system, of your dam, of your, uh, your creation tools that are pulling from the dam. Trend number six is really getting into that notion of what I'm thinking of calling dam 4.0. And this is where, this may be a little bit more forward thinking than some of the others, but it's this notion of predictive dam. And just to give you a couple simple examples here is, you know, I think when we talk in a, in a 3.0 world where we're round tripping analytics based on what's actually happening when we release these assets into the real world, we're round tripping some analytics back to the asset and saying, okay, 
this is what this is how these assets performed. I think there's valuable information that, in that, but that's step one. And certain vendors try to give that a score or, you know, to try to, the challenge here is that it's really different to, difficult to normalize when just raw data is coming back to an asset. Where I think we're gonna go is to more of a queryable system in the future. So imagine a scenario where you're creating a campaign and you say, I want to, I want to attract uh, women ages 35 to 55 in Boston, Massachusetts, who are looking to take a vacation. I want to get their attention in a in this campaign that we're doing. We're running it on social and email and in our website. Which asset should we should we use? What if you were able to ask your DAM system or your omnichannel content platform? What if you were to ask that system? based on previous data, which assets would perform better? To take that a step further, you know, we're all drowning in, in assets today. There's so much content in our, in our systems. Instead of thinking of this notion of finding that exact asset that you know exists within this system and searching it via the traditional methods, what if your system could start to bubble up the assets that it thinks are most important to you? Like what if, it, what if you work for a retailer and, you know, uh, that the the system knew that last last Christmas season you used this series of, of images or this type of image, this type of content, and this performed really well. And based on that, you could go either use the same images or like images to to um, to do something similar and hopefully achieve similar results in, in this year and not waste time repeating the same mistakes of years past. Now, these are simplistic examples that I'm giving, but I can tell you that many buyers that are out there are absolutely thinking of leveraging AI capabilities, infusing that data into here and in, in, into your content system so that you are truly able to, to take advantage of lessons learned to inform future decisions. So you're not just recreating the wheel every single time. You are actually making, making smart decisions here. Trend number seven is organizations are without a doubt still buying new dams um you know for the first time you know there's a, there's so many organizations that we get we get asked to help to pick digital asset management system for the first time that still happens today but i can say that more than ever in the last say six months we've been getting calls to say real story group can you help us determine is this dam still the right fit for us you know, there's a lot of people who have bought a dam, used it for many years now, and are now really questioning, we want to take the next step on, that, on our journey. Is this really still the dam for us and, and the right in the right dam to get us to that next step or even the next two steps? And so we're doing a lot of uh, revisiting of, of existing implementations and, and challenging uh, the status quo with, with some market alternatives. And the good news for you as buyers is that this, this marketplace remains vibrant. There's been a few acquisitions over the last year, but, um, but to date we haven't seen massive consolidation in this space. If anything, there's more energy and more, more vendors th th than ever. And so, you know, anyone who's followed Real Story Group for, for some time, you know we like to apply design thinking principles to tech selection when you're starting from scratch. And when you're evaluating whether this is still the right dam for you, I encourage you to do the same thing. Create user stories that, that are descriptive in nature and describe the way you want to work in that future, whether that future is one phase along or two phases along or just a better way of, exist, of existing within the current phase of dam that you're, that you're in on your dam journey. And challenge your incumbents versus some market alternatives to, to prove to you that they are still the right fit or prove that something is might might may or may not be better out there in the marketplace and just doing some exercises like that i think you you'll you'll learn a lot if nothing else from what's out there in the marketplace and and you can really be certain whether or not it makes sense to go somewhere else or it makes sense to stick with what you got and and reinvest that in that technology and continue to to evolve with that technology to get you to the next phase as well so keep doing that i i, I encourage you if anyone needs any help with that please let us know and in summary, here's our seven trends for 2022. You know, that market evolution is really aligning with people's journey stages, that continues to be true. I'm really challenging all of you to think bigger than traditional assets in, in the scope, in your scope of influence, if it's possible. 
think about this concept of the never finished assets and then the implications that, that come along with that as it relates to you know, doing real time manipulation of these assets. I think really paying attention to various contexts, whether it's whether it's around rights management or just you know the uh, the best image for a particular geography and and modality and 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 uh, and and time and place. And it's all about getting the right content to the right person at the right time. Don't neglect user experience needs of your of your colleagues and staff. You know the integrations are going to really put pressure on that, but make sure you have someone paying attention to that pay attention to the future and think about do you want to get to a point where your systems are are improving the efficiency of content production you know can we can we leverage the the data that we know about uh the, how our assets are performing in the world to inf inform future decisions that's really powerful there and for those of you wondering if you still have the right dam it's okay to question that. It's okay to look into the marketplace. It's okay to go test drive with some other cars and uh, and see if, if if your current system is still the right one for you. With that, thank you all so much for spending some time with me today. As always, I appreciate all of your support. Um, it, we had a great group of you on online today. I think this is one of our most attended webinar webinars of the year. I can, I, you know, the, the numbers are bearing that out. If anyone wants to check out the research, feel free to download a sample. We're updating it all the time. If anyone wants to have a chat about where you are in your damn journey and what you're witnessing as, as in terms of trends that are out there, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter or, or via email. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day.